on the Makeup Forever HD foundation. Now the foundation, if you don't know what it looks like, comes in this packaging. It's like a plastic um, container thing <laughs> and it just opens up like that and it has a pump which is very good for you know controlling how much foundation comes out. So it's called the Hair Definition Foundation which means it's really good um, for taking pictures with so it wouldn't come off looking really funny on pictures but the downside to that is it doesn't have SPF. If you are going to use this foundation you probably should use a moisturiser that has SPF because obviously you want to protect your skin from the sun. This foundation does not have SPF protection. So I have combination oily skin which is obviously I get oily in my T-zone, uh, in my chin and my nose, that sort of thing. Um, and this is supposed to be an oil free foundation. I am in the shade 178. I did initially say that this was the wrong shade for me, but it's not. It, basically, it fits me perfectly. I am wearing that today and I think it's fine. It, it's okay for my face, but not for my neck. I find that it makes my neck a little dark. It's a water based foundation and it applies really smoothly, probably the same way as the Lancome foundation applies. Quite nice and quite smooth and it definitely covers all my um, all my blemishes. I feel it photographs well but sometimes looks a lot more fuller coverage in person. Like in pictures it looks like a really nice foundation like you don't have so much on but you can tell in person. Um, but it depends on how much you use anyway. I like to have a full coverage whenever I'm applying my foundation anyway so that's the look I go for. Some people say this is a sheer to medium coverage but I do I would say this is a medium coverage, but I don't have to use so much. Like it seems to cover my face um, quite well. It this shade is kind of on the yellowy side slightly, um, but it's still okay because I I have a mixture of red and yellow undertones to my face, so this is okay for you know for matching. And I use my concealer, which has more of red undertones, to sort of balance it all out. So in terms of the color matching, it's fine. When I apply my concealer and when I apply my powder, I use the MAC MSF Deep Dark Powder when I'm using this foundation. I've switched back to Deep Dark now because I've really seen that it actually looks a lot better on me. Well, it's called Dark Deep now, so it looks fine with that. It says it's meant to be oil free and it dries to a matte finish. It's oil free, but I still find myself getting quite oily after a few hours. I'm having to use my blot powder quite um, a few times in the day. I would say I can get about four hours of wear and then I have to apply my blot powder, which sometimes can be quite annoying, but I'm, I was already used to that anyway. It, it looks more like a dewy look. So if you have dry skin, it might not be so bad the way it looks on your skin because it makes your skin a lot more dewy looking. But if you have oily skin, you will find this quite frustrating, especially in your T-zone area. But um, after I've used my blot powder, it gets shiny again, but it's more dewy. It's not like really overly, like really oily and really shiny. So it's not so bad if you want to have a not so matte face. But it doesn't stay matte all day. It's not a matte foundation. It does sort of dry to a dewy finish. Maybe it all depends on the primer you use as well. I'm still using the Black Radiance primer along with my Avon Magic Space Perfector because this foundation tends to crease along my like my mouth area, like my smile lines. It gives me smile lines, and this is the only foundation that does that, like recently. So I have to apply my Avon Magic Space Perfector on this area because for some reason that foundation is really good at um, filling in like wrinkles, like frown lines and smile lines as well. Maybe if I try a different primer, this might stay matte a lot longer. I am still waiting to try the Smashbox primer because a lot of a lot of people do tend to rave about that primer a lot and I was meant to pick it up today but I didn't. It definitely does give like a smooth finish to my skin, to my face. It doesn't leave my face blotchy or patchy or anything. It definitely does blend in really well. I use a real techniques but for brush to apply this foundation and it just goes on smoothly, goes on really well. It's just it does tend to not stay matte for very long, I have to reapply my blot powder. It is suitable for dry and oily skin, but I think more for dry skin because of the, the finish it gives, it gives like a dewy finish. So 
Um, but I would still recommend it for people with oily skin. Just make sure you use a primer, a mattifying primer as well. This is installed in the UK in the sense that there is no, there isn't a store that stocks Makeup Forever products. But you can get them online. I will link both links down below. I got this from IMAX when I was when I went to IMAX in February, and they did a discount on it. I think I got it for like eighteen pounds something. But I know I think it might be double that, you know, double the price. But you can't get it in a particular store in the UK, but it's definitely available in the US and probably other countries as well. So that's the downside to it. So if you are going to purchase it, you can't try it out or test it out in a store. You just have to sort of hope and pray that this is the right shade for you. Compared to my Lancome foundation, I like them both. I can't choose between the two. Um, the only difference is the Lancome one looks a lot more natural looking if that makes sense it's, I don't have to I don't have to use that much for this one either but I I like the finish to the Lancome foundation um, as well I like them both I would I can't choose between the two I like them both so I do try to alternate so for those with dry skin I would recommend this foundation because it gives that sort of dewy finish after a while for those with oily skin it does stay matte for three to four hours and then after a while it just goes back to this sort of glossy finish on your face. So um, it is up to you if you want to use a mattifying primer as well to try it out with. But there are mixed reviews on this foundation. I like it. I just want to try out some more um, some more primers just to see how it lasts. It does. I don't have to touch up my foundation at all during the day. I only have to blot. Some say they prefer the matte velvet to the HD. And it's more likely to be people with oily skin because it gives it a matte finish. I still haven't agreed with that foundation yet. When I do eventually try it out properly, I'll let you guys know. But compared to that, because you know how I don't how I feel about that foundation, the Velvet Plus, I would go for this because it's just easy application. But like I said, it's mixed reviews, so it's, it's I think I would suggest getting a tester and try it out and see how you feel about it before you purchase a full size. Just because there are different reviews on this foundation and it does work differently on different skin types so that's pretty much it I hope this was informative I hope it's helped you if you're wanting to try out this foundation I like it but I just don't like the fact that it doesn't stay matte for a long time it gets really oily it kind of reminds me of the um, of the of my matte foundations but I think a, if we use a really good primer or like a good powder to set it, it should work better. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.